Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is the big one. This is what you've been waiting for. It's Heaven's Ward. Final Fantasy XIV Online, published by Square Enix. Uh, we are going to start this from the very, very beginning. The big one. This we is are going to create a new... Heaven's Ward. Final Fantasy... We are going to create a new character. We are going to create a new... Um, we're going to create a new everything. This is going to be the business. So, here we go. First off, let's get into the character creation menu. We have a range of races here. Uh, we have got the here. These are more human-like people. They're said to have first travelled to Eorzea from surrounding continents and islands. Three great migratory waves later, they are now one of the most populous of the civilised races. They exhibit a relatively modest physique, both in height and build. They're known for the particularly short rounded ears. The ears are well suited to travelling long distances by foot, a trait thought to account for their swift proliferation. Uh, they espouse an eclectic variety of languages and traditions. Uh, it's a legacy of their diverse heritage, um, as this is a result of an, a, a lack of a unified cultural identity. So, human-like race, obviously going to be the most popular in any uh, fantasy MMO. So that's the higher male, that's the higher female. Next up is the Elizen. Uh, these are more of your elf type people. In former times, the Elizen were the sole inhabitants of Eorzea, that is the continent of uh, Final Fantasy, is set on, claiming dominion over her. They're tra traditionally a nomadic people, the tall, slender Elizen, believed to the realm to be theirs by divine right. Unfortunately, this belief made the eventual appearance of the Hure in their multitudes akin to an invasion and a long history of conflict ensued. Ultimately, the Elizen diverged into two clans that existed. The Wildwood Elizen took to the forests to protect their homeland, while the Duskwhite Elizen withdrew to the caves and subterranean, opting instead to avoid all contact with anyone but their own. The third race here is the Lalafell. Um, a wee people sporting short rounded bodies, the Lalafell appear as no more than children to the eyes of most. Many of these nimble little folk hail from the islands of the South Seas, where they practice a simple agricultural lifestyle. It was not until the opening of maritime trade routes that the gradual migration of Lalafells to Eorzea began. Now one of the most well established races in the realm, Lalafells can be found in great numbers in nearly every city. Though Lalafell and culture places a great emphasis on blood relations, individuals are known for getting amicable, amicably, getting along amicably, <sighs> amicably, with members of other races. So that's the Lalafell, the small children looking race. Next up is the Makoti. Uh, the ancestors of the Makoti made their way to Erzio during the age of the endless frost, traversing the frozen seas in pursuit of wildlife upon which they subsisted. Adaption to a hunting lifestyle has fashioned them with a keen sense of smell, powerful legs, and a tail which provides them with exceptional balance. Makoti are known for being very territorial, and many individuals tend to lead a solitary lifestyle, particularly males. But here we are, Makoti, the uh, cat-like people um, of Eorzea. Makoti female there as well. Next up uh, is the Rodigan. Known for their brawny builds and piercing eyes, the Rodigan are by far the most rugged of Eorzea's races. The majority of the realms Rodigan belong to the Sea Wolf Clan, a maritime people who earn their keep on or by the sea, be it as sailors, fishermen or pirates. Comparatively fewer in number are the Hellsguard, who are known for their more earnest demeanours and can often be found working as bodyguards and smithies. That is the Rodigan. Finally, the Ora. The curved horns and beautifully patterned scales that characterise the Ora often give rise to speculations that are a member of this hyur like race. Native to the far eastern continent of Othard are in fact a progeny of dragons. This however has been disputed with scholars citing several distinct differences in the two races as evidence of decidedly dissimilar roots. The first and foremost being the creation, uh, first and foremost being the enhanced hearing and spatial recognition granted by Ora's cranial projections traits not attributed to draconian horns. And the second being the gross disproportion in body mass between Ori males and females, again a trait widely unseen in dragons. And you can certainly see it here, the sort of big brawny uh, male aura and the very small, almost delicate uh, female. So 
for this video we will be mail a roll i think mm -hmm. and do we want to be part of the sea wolves uh, long ago no vessel or coastal village was safe from the fury of the sea wolves and their maritime brand of brutality the mere mention of the clan was enough to strike fear into the hearts of any who drew their livelihood from the seas the sea wolves originally hail from the islands of the far north seas where they still subsist as fishermen and women it was not until the large-scale deployment of Limsa Limsa's armada that the sea wolves' appetite for piracy diminished. Now, it's not uncommon to see them employed as sailors or naval mercenaries in all manner of vessels. However, they have never forgotten the ways of their homeland and still use the ancient Rodigan language in their names. The Hell's Guard, on the other hand, are a Rodigan clan with body and mind tempered by the unforgiving heat of the volcanic regions they inhabit. Believing these mountains of flame to be gates to the underworld, their line has for centuries stood vigil to protect the passage of souls back to the realm of the living. As the harsh environs of the homeland produce little sustenance, the second and third born are often sent forth from their mountain villages and many more make their way to the great cities. It's there that their sheer girth and steely demeanours place them in high demand as soldiers and cell swords, allowing the young of even the largest families to surpass their elder siblings in prosperity. We will be going, I think, for the... Yeah, let's go for the health guards. Let's go for the, the, the lower population. In terms of height, let's make him quite tall. Uh, 2.3 meters, he will be massive. There we go. Um, in terms of uh, muscle tone, well, the best way to tell is to do this, go smooth, or shredded. It's got to be shredded, I'll never be shredded, um, quite like that, so let's go for that. Skin tone, a variety, anywhere from real pale white to a sort of dark red, to an almost black, I quite like that, it's like a deep red blacky yeah let's go for that hairstyle this will um, be pretty much irrelevant because we will normally have at least something on our head um, but let's have a wee look at down uh, so plenty of different hairstyles available side party maybe Let's go for something like that. Yeah. That'll do for now, at least until we complete the, uh, the quest to unlock the aesthetician. And hair color, let's go for, I would go well with the dark, quite light maybe. Perhaps a deep red or a, ooh. Maybe a sort of deep pink, we'll hit the, Hit the fantasy overtones hard with a sort of pink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's look at his face. Let's get a little more light in here, shall we? Let's try and... There we go. Let's get his face in the light. So this is face one. That's two. Quite like that. Three, quite rugged. Four, very square. Let's go with two. I quite like two. Uh, so jaw, we've got different jaw types. It's minimal difference really, isn't it? Let's go for type two. Eye shape, we we'll better zoom in for this one. Again, the changes are minimal with a slight uplift there. Iris size, we'll make them large or small, we'll make them large. And eye color, let's give them some piercing blue eyes. Eyebrows, do they have eyebrows? It's more like the, um, it's like the, the bone, like the eye socket, I guess, more than the eyebrow, really. Um, let's go with type 3 there. Nose. Oh, we've got six different types of nose. Type 6. Mouth. Oh, let's go with a sort of pursed, pursed lip expression. Lip colour. No, we don't need lip colour. What have we got here? 
a little beard. We have a beard on there and some scars. Do we have do we have a beard? Uh, I have a beard. Let's give him a beard. And tattoos. They look a bit a bit naff. We'll leave them. Okay, so there's like all different types of eyeshadow. A butterfly, heart. Hat whiskers? No, blue. Ah, warping. I'm kind of going to go for a scholar this time, so maybe something like that, perhaps. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. Let's go for that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's the one. Type 5. Nailed on. <laughs> okay. So, birthday. Let's go for, say, the 4th astral. 15th of the 4th astral moon. And then a selection of deities. Um, which, as someone who's played Final Fantasy for a while, mean absolutely nothing nothing at all really. um but as we are here we will go uh, for Oshon is the ruler of the mountains and the god of travelers and the vagrants which fits perfectly with the lore of the character here so we're going for disciples of magic we are going to go for an arcanist a class that i have never ever played arcanists adept in the arts of arcanum Derive their might from symbols of power born of geometric techniques hailing from across the southern seas. Held with occult grimoires, these symbols lend shape to the arcanist's aether, thereby allowing him to produce a myriad of powerful spells. Using the self-same symbols to unlock the latent power contained within gemstones, arcanists are able to summon forth the familiar known as a carbuncle to carry out their bidding. So, let us progress here. Uh, we will go for the legacy server. Before. Um. Yeah, we will go on the. Uh, yeah, we'll go on the zodiac server, and we will, uh, of course, be capo. Uh, Apple Swan. Let's see if we can get away with that. Well, there we go. So, we're going to hit it. Let's do this. Begin the game. Get ready for the cutscenes, because we all know Final Fantasy cutscenes. Final Fantasy story is epic. There is the beautiful Limsa Luminsa. Um, and let's get into this. I will stay quiet, um, unless anything... There's, unless there's not voice acting, in which case I will, uh, I will do my best to add some flair to the proceedings. Perhaps add a little bit of chatter, maybe try and create some unique character voices. But um, you have to bear with me. Yeah. 
Well, there we go. There is the start, the first cutscene. Here comes my voice acting. Go away. You're right, lad. You was moaning in your sleep. Sweating buckets, besides. Roll the ship, got your stomach churning, has it? Hmm. Doesn't seem like seasickness, now that I look at you. Well, I'll be the aether, I reckon. Some are more sensitive to the stuff than others, you see. We ain't too far from Valbrand now. Just chock full of aetherites. No need to fret, though. You will soon get used to it. Ugh. Might as well have been blooming seasickness. Ship's leaping around like a demented chocobo today. I reckon I might head out on deck. Give myself a breath of fresh air. Limbs of the Mince is still a fair way off, in case you're wondering. Seeing as you're awake and all, how's about you keep me company till we get there? Them young'uns don't much care for conversation, see? Any roads. Brennan's the name. Pedlins be trade. Ah, smell that salty sea breeze. Now then, lad, judging by your unusual garments, I'd say you're one of them new adventurers, my warm. I knew it. Going wherever the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory, and that's what I call living. As long as you can avoid dying, I mean. Ain't no secret that adventuring's a risky business, these days especially. What was it that first attracted you to it? So why do we become an adventurer? To gain power, to win glory, to amass a fortune. Hmm. To gain power. Power! Hmm. As in, power to good, good? Like, protecting the weak, fighting for what's right and all that? Aye. That's what I thought you meant. Well, adventurers do get up to a lot of fighting, that's for sure. You never be short of a chance to polish your warcraft in the adventuring business. Once you make it to port, you'd best sign yourself up at the Adventurers Guild. They'll see you on the right path. It wouldn't hurt to join a guild, neither. Limbs is home to a few. They fancy learning how to swing an axe, sling a spell. Think about seeking one out. Just remember, though, there's more important things than fortune and glory, such as breathing. Ain't no profit in being dead, that's a fact. Ships off the starboard bow, pirate colors. Pirates, bloody elves. Have you no sense? Get below. the world coming to? Pirates firing a ship on flying luminescent colours. Bastards either have a boatload of balls or bugger all for brains. You can rest easy, friends. We've made it out of cannon range. No buccaneers will bark at this. Blighty temptress wants the winds in our sails. That was two bleeding close. Glad one of us kept a head and shoulders. I reckon I'd have lost mine otherwise. If them pirates gave up the chase, we must be close to port. Let's head up on deck and have a look, shall we?
By the way, this is your first trip to Limsa Liminsa? <laughs> it is. Well then. Let this journey different tell you the ins and outs of your destination. Limsa Liminsa prides itself on being Eorzea's foremost naval power. Weren't too long ago the place was ruled by pirates, but thanks to the current admiral's civilised and influence, the city-state could almost pass for a respectable nation. You'd never guess she was once a rum swilling buccaneer herself. <laughs> of course, most folk ain't so quick to change. And with a town full of liberty-loving ruffians, you can imagine how many naysayers and troublemakers she's got to deal with. Let them pirates stick a fancy dust just now. And if that weren't bad enough, I've heard the Sahagin are raiding the coast just as bold as you please. That's them sea-dwelling beastmen the locals call fishbacks, in case you don't know. Ah, long last. Land ho! Behold, Limsa Liminsa, a nation blessed by the ocean's bounty and beloved of Limelin, goddess of navigation. On a windswept isle in the southwestern corner of the realm. Amidst the roiling waves of the Lotano Sea lies the maritime city state of Limsa Lominsa. To this haven for bandits and brigands, cutthroats and curs, seekers of both freedom and fortune, comes a lone adventurer. Lone yet not alone, for the hero's arrival has drawn the gaze of the nation's patron deity, Lim Lane. What realm-shaking fate has she descried in the churning waters of this mortal's future? And here's where we part ways, son. I'm off to the markets to deliver me wares. Then it's on to the high road for me. Here. How oh, many you have this? By the way, thanks for saving me arse earlier. Hey, you never did tell me your name, did you? Well, here's an idea. Become the sort of storied personage I can brag about having met, and I'll consider us square. Where are Through peril and hardship, discovery and triumph, may the navigator guide this brave soul on his life's voyage. Till sea swallows all.